This Sunday's verse comes from Hebrews chapter 10, verses 24 through 25, and they say, And let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. So I wanted to point out three key words in these two verses. The first one being provoke, the second one being neglecting, and the third being encouraging. To provoke is to stir up, arouse, or call forth things such as feelings, desires, or actions. Neglecting is to pay no attention or l too little attention to. And encouraging is to inspire with courage, spirit, or confidence. Provoke in verse 24 is made to be a positive thing. We usually know it as a negative thing, such as to anger or enrage someone in order to get them to do something. But not in this case. Provoke is from the Greek word parxumus and uh, that's from which we get our English word paroxysm, paroxysm, which literally means with a view to excitement. So how do we provoke someone to love and good deeds? It starts with encouragement. Sometimes we need to encourage those around us in a more positive way. A lot of people's first reactions are to discourage someone by saying something like, you're not good enough. In order for someone to be encouraged, they need to know that something is being done with them and not to them. Instead of saying, you're not good enough, which is to someone, try saying, what can I do to help you to be better? This is with someone. If someone knows that you are with them and that they don't feel alone in something, the result will usually be better. I've done this kind of thing in the workplace as a manager and even as a coworker. It takes a lot of patience and understanding, especially when my employee or coworker is struggling. All we can do for them is help them along the way by either showing them how to do something or just by encouragement. If you can build someone's confidence, that is usually a good start. This is the same. Uh, this is the same when it comes to someone's faith. They need to know the message of God, that he or she is loved, and that they are worth something. That is why fellowship is so important. Talking about uh, not uh, not neglecting to meet together, from verse twenty-five. Um, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. If there was ever a time when believers needed to come together, it's today. Instead of bringing each other down, we need to draw together in love in the name of Jesus Christ, just like verse 24 says. We need to study the Word of God together. Fellowship is such an awesome thing when a group of people that come together in the name of Jesus Christ sit around with their Bibles open and talk about the Word of God and all about the wonderful things within the covers just to think about the history and just where everything's been, how where everyone's come from, and just all the stuff that happened, just thinking of being there, just imagining it. Um, Matthew 18, 20, Matthew chapter 18, verse 20, says, For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. I am blessed in being a part of a couple Bible studies throughout the week, and I am blessed to be a part of this one that is on Facebook. To me, there's nothing better than fellowship. Proverbs 27, 17 says, Iron sharpens iron, and one person sharpens, sharpens the wits of another. We come together in fellowship to better each other and to learn and build a relationship with God. It's important to be in fellowship with one another. God has something for a group that he will not give to any one individual. It's also important to remember that we cannot grow in our faith unless we share it with one another. Seriously, though, if you have something as amazing as God within your heart and at, and at your side, and he has shown you how great he is, why the heck would you keep that to yourself? We share things with others and receive things from others so that we can grow in our faith. You will grow in faith even more in a group than you would on your own. But don't get me wrong, individual Bible study is important too. The Holy Spirit is the guide and teacher from the Word of God, and he will still be there for us in a group as well as individually. And all the more as you see the day approaching. There are two things to consider here. First, to those Jews being addressed in these verses at the time it was written, the day approaching probably meant the day when their temple would be destroyed in AD 70. The believers of this time were meeting together in the temple, as they usually did on a regular basis. That is where they were on the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came. So where will the Jew Jewish people gather after the temple is destroyed? The author of uh, Hebrews is telling the people that even though this happens, keep meeting together anyway. That message can be conveyed to us as well today. 
we don't have to meet at a church, we don't have to meet at home either. We can go to a nice coffee shop, or we can go to a park, or something like that. It doesn't matter. God will still be there wherever people meet. He will meet us where we are. As a side note, the church started by meeting in private homes, and then eventually the temple. The amount of people grew so much that they had to find a bigger place to meet. I think that a home is the perfect place for worship. It's a place where people can enjoy a meal together, feel welcome and comfortable. That is a dream of mine someday, to open up my house for fellowship and for people to come and go as they please. Not to say that that can't happen in a church, either. Another thing we need to consider as the day is approaching is that for us today we are hoping and waiting in expectation, expectation for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Hebrews chapter 9.28 says, So Christ, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to deal with sin, but to save those who are eagerly waiting for him. Why is Jesus coming again to the earth? He will be coming in judgment. The first time he came, he was born in a stable with animals, and his purpose was to be our Savior. He fulfilled that in his ministry, suffering, death, and resurrection. So we all need to be ready for this day. We have no idea when it will be here. That is something that only God knows. So let me read Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24 through 25 again. And let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. So there's a couple of things I wanted to share with you all. Um, the first being from Oswald Chambers. Um, I have his devotional that I read every day, and I found um, Hebrews chapter 10, verses 24 through 25 in it, and I just wanted to read what he said about it. So, here we go. Um, we are all cap capable of being spiritual sluggards. We do not want to mix with the rough and tumble of life as it is. Our one object is to secure retirement. The note struck in Hebrews 10 is that of provoking one another and of keeping together, both of which require initiative, the initiative of Christ realization, not of self-realization. To live a remote, retired, secluded life is the antipodes of spiritu spirituality as Jesus Christ taught it. The test of our spirituality comes when we come up against injustice and meanness and ingratitude and, and turmoil, all of which have the tendency to make us spiritual sluggards. We want to use prayer and Bible reading for the purpose of retirement. We utilize God for the sake of getting peace and joy. That is, we do not want to realize Jesus Christ, but only our enjoyment of Him. This is the first step in the wrong direction. All these things are effects, and we try to make them causes. I think it meet, said Peter, to stir you up by putting you in remembrance. It is a most disturbing thing to be smitten in the ribs, in the ribs by some provoker of God, by someone who is full of spiritual activity. Active work and spiritual activity are not the same thing. Active work may be the counterfeit of spiritual activity. The danger of spiritual sluggishness is that we do not wish to be stirred up. All we want to hear about is spiritual retirement. Jesus Christ never encourages the idea of retirement. Go tell my brethren. So the second thing I wanted to share Actually, let me back it up a little bit. I just wanted to talk a little bit more about what Oswald Chambers said. So, basically, Oswald Chambers confirms what was already said. Fellowship is very important, and it will prepare us for things that come up in life, and that we should uh, make sure not to be lazy about it. Another thing he said that I liked was kind of what I said earlier about keeping your faith to yourself. Do you really want to study the Bible on your own and stay secluded away from people? If you love God as much as you say you do, make sure you let others know through fellowship. That day when Jesus Christ returns could happen at any second, and all we need and we all need to be ready for it. So the other thing that I wanted to share was something from J. Vernon McGee about it's just a little blurb he uh, wrote in his commentary about um, the book of Hebrews. I just I like the book of Hebrews a lot. Um, nobody really knows who wrote it. But um, it's very good, and um, McGee uh, definitely says why it's good, so I'll read that really fast. The Epistle to the Hebrews, one of the most important books of the New Testament, in that it contains some of the chief doctrines of the Christian faith, is as well a book of infinite logic and great beauty. 
To read it is to breathe the atmosphere of heaven itself. To study it is to partake of strong spiritual meat. To abide in its teachings is to be led from immaturity to maturity in the knowledge of Christian truth and of Christ himself. It is to go unto perfection. I definitely recommend the book of Hebrews. If um, you're not familiar with it, it's something uh, that is worth reading, definitely. So that's it for this week. I hope that everyone has a good week and take care.